so going to secondary survey once we have a primary survey primary survey which is brief uh, and it has to be done uh, with uh, very uh, protocolized approach like following a b c d e so once the primary survey is done and you have enough time uh, then we go for secondary survey secondary survey can be done maybe after the pr primary survey is done with some surgical intervention is required immediately that is done and later on secondary survey can be done so secondary survey can be done after primary survey if you have time but if the time is not available the secondary survey can be done later on once the uh, once the primary problem uh, which is causing life threatening injuries uh, which has led to life threatening injuries it is resolved then the secondary survey can be done secondary survey is basically a very detailed and thorough head to toe examination looking at the bleeding in the scalp bleeding looking at the bleeding in the ear bleeding through the uh, you know nasal cavities or the bleeding in the eyes or oral cavity or bleeding from the uh, you know or injuries at the tracheobronchial tree injuries at the chest rib fractures cutaneous emphysema or uh, examination of uh, the abdomen showing any hemorrhage or distension uh, of the abdomen and the again checking the pelvis and uh, uh, examination of the long bones uh, for possible bleeding or any significant injuries is done very meticulously and then at the same time ample history is also evaluated which includes asking for allergies if the patient has significant allergies to commonly used drugs that should be avoided uh, some of the medication allergy uh, medication if the patient is on like patient, elderly patient may be on multiple drugs like anticoagulants and antiplatelets these patients are likely to bleed more so so anti antagonist or anticoagulants may be required if the patient is on beta blocker their heart rate may be low uh, if the patient is on antihypertensive agent their blood pressure may be low so uh, we need to assess you know why the patient is not uh, you know uh, getting resuscitated even with the medic uh, you know uh, resuscitative effort then these medications should be evaluated which may be a confounding factor for uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, the successful goal so the medical history is very very important diabetes hypertension or obstructive airway disease uh, any malignancy or if the patient is pregnant then you know uh, we are dealing with the two patients baby and the female patient itself so putting a wedge on the right side of the uh, 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 you know uh, hip uh, preventing the compressive effect of um, the uterus on the ivc uh, can be prevented when the patient has taken last pill is also very important which will help us to prevent aspiration if the patient is not nbm we are trying to you know uh, fiddle around with the airway the patient is likely to aspirate so it is very important that you know if the patient is fed the rail strip should be inserted uh, if the patient is obtended and the rail strip aspiration will help us to prevent aspiration risk and what are the events that has led to the mechanism of injury uh, is also very very important that that clue is very important why because that will help us to assess the severity of the injury if the patient has high velocity injuries okay or the patient has fall from a significant height so it will give us about possibility of the other injuries or concomitant injuries can be evaluated accordingly so as i have told you a uh, uh, frequent examination is also very important it's not like primary examination primary survey is done then the examination is not required trauma victims will need, need continuous reevaluation reassessment it is very very important and uh, a neurological examination on the basis of the glasgow coma score is very very important uh, we should have clinical examination radiological examination and laboratory test which which will help us to uh, uh, come up with the plan and uh, that is the complete uh, you know assess, we call it as a complete assessment and then at the end tetanus prophylaxis should be given if the patient is not immunized because uh, clostridial clostridial infections uh, are you no know, uh, life threatening and necrotizing fasciitis can happen so uh, support with the anaerobic or you know uh, clindamycin uh, is very very important for uh, patients with the open wound 